Today, we'll be taking a look at the G-Chem Chemical Warfare Mod. Now, what is G-Chem? G-Chem is pretty much the Chemical Warfare Mod you've always wanted. We've looked at nukes, we've looked at other bomb mods, but this one especially focuses on chemicals, as you'd expect. This one is chlorine, one of the many gases that we're going to experience in today's video. And of course, you're gonna need special equipment, so we have not only a chemical suit, but also a chemical protective gas mask. There's going to be a multitude of different gases that we can use. Not all of them are extremely deadly, but spoiler alert, most of them are. We also have access to a bomb, which is going to make this video pretty exciting. So with all that out of the way, let's now take a closer look at the G-Chem Chemical Warfare Mod. First things first, we have the chemical detector. Go ahead and press E on it, you'll pick it up. I already have one. And what this is going to do is we're going to go ahead, press walk, which is usually alt, and E, and you'll prime it. And then we're going to get a gas explosion, or more so just a release of the gas. This detector should let us know if we're near some kind of toxic gas. Okay, so it's detecting chlorine. Awesome. Unfortunately, we're already infected with it, which chlorine, speaking of, is not the most dangerous gas in this mod. Being the first gas successfully used in World War I, it is a gas that will irritate the skin and the eyes. However, not really much more beyond that. I've also brought back our HUD guys just so you could see our health. And pretty much as we can see, there's not a whole lot going on. I'm coughing, I'm shaking. It's not very comfortable, of course, but we're not dying. So that's the important bit. The cool thing about this mod, by the way, guys, you'll notice the gas is moving in its own direction. Now, by the way, this is affected by... I don't know what was going on there. This is affected by the wind. So as you can see, the wind is moving in this direction and it will cross through the... What the? It'll cross through the map, depending on where the wind is bringing it. So we started way over here. Now the gas is making its way across town. And now we get the detector working. So if we get close enough, it'll tell us there is chlorine nearby, which as we have just found out, is not the most deadly gas, as long as you're not bathing in it. Speaking of gas, of course, we have the Bursting Gas Grenade. Now, this is a grenade that can help... Wait, why are we healing? I forgot we have the Automatic Healing mod, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is the Bursting Gas Grenade. You can go ahead and toss it or throw it, just like a standard grenade in Half-Life or Gary's mod. It'll explode into this beautiful plume of gas, and this one in particular is Tear Gas. So let's talk about that. CS Gas, also known as Tear Gas, is a gas used by police officers or riot control teams that try to maintain a situation. It's a white gas that, as you can tell, is causing a lot of distress. It can cause blindness, it can make you cough, but it's generally seen as non-lethal. However, that's only in small doses. If you bathe yourself in it, it might prove to be more harmful. And as you can see, we just threw a few grenades and already this entire area is blanketed in this gas. It doesn't seem to be moving too much. So this stuff isn't as bad as chlorine. However, I still wouldn't recommend bathing in this. Um, actually, you know what? We're gonna bathe in it. Let's see what happens. Ah, good old tear gas. You know what? Let's throw some more. I hope this is tear gas. Oh, I don't know if that's tear gas. I don't think that's tear gas. If you press R with the grenade, you can change the type of gas you can throw. And I don't know if we actually threw that. I can't see anything. I am completely blind. I think we used mustard gas. I hope we didn't. Okay, guys, good news. Pretty sure that was just CS gas because that's all I see right here. So staying in CS gas, as you can see, is very, very harmful. Um, you can't see crap. It, it's honestly a, a pain in the ass to deal with. Next up, we have Phosgene. Phosgene, I hope I'm saying that right. This is like a silent but deadly type of gas. It's a colorless gas, but in this game, it's depicted as near colorless, just so you can see that it's there. We're gonna go ahead and toss it. Oh, that is scary. Look at that, I can just barely make it out. But after two minutes, of being subjected to this gas, you die. 
The effects of it are very small initially, but over time, it becomes immensely toxic. And this was the cause of 90% of the gas deaths in World War I. So once they found out they could really use it to its potential, they definitely did, unfortunately. But you know what? This is Necro's videos. We're gonna go into it. We're gonna see what happens. How deadly is this? You smell phosgene. So it says we smell, it doesn't say it detects. I don't know if that's the detector going off or not. However, we're gonna see if we do eventually die. I don't know if it really takes two full minutes. My guy is coughing up a damn storm. I don't know if that's, oh. I think we're actually pretty good. I don't think we're gonna die. Uh-oh. You're experiencing Phosgene's gas's latent effects. Wait it out. I didn't get to read that last part. I think we're dying, guys. I think we're dying. Whoa. My screen. Oh, my health is going down. This. This is the ultimate. Oh, I can't move. I'm slow. Oh, I think I'm choking. And there we have it. Fosh gene is insanely, I hope I'm saying that right, is insanely, insanely toxic, guys. Two minutes, and we are dead. So, be weary with this gas. Next up, we have Green Cross, which is a mixture of chlorine and Fosh gene. So, it's like a more potent chlorine, and it also has that latent effect of Fosh gene, which can very much kill you. However, since the dosage is less than just pure phosgene, it might not be as deadly as just regular phosgene. Let's test it out. So tossing it, I wonder what the color is going to be like. It should be white, right? Okay, it's, oh, yellow. Did, did we use the right gas? Let's, let's get close and find out. You can smell chlorine and phosgene. Okay, so we need to pick up a detector. I forgot to pick that up. I like how it's actually saying the mixture of the two. Um, so yeah, going in it. Let's see if we get the chlorine effects. So with chlorine, I noticed that when you stay in it, it does kind of make your screen very hazy, very hard to see. It does attack the eyes. We're now getting to the point where we're starting to get a little bit of a blur effect. The screen is going black. Is that the phosgene? Or is that just because we're staying in this gas for so long. We're starting to lose health. I think we're suffocating, so we're going to escape the gas now and see if we go back to normal. It is insanely hard to see anything <laughs> like this. Oh, yep. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Oh my god, this is so bad. We don't gotta worry about the gas killing us because we died anyway. So if you stay in the gas for too long and you get a big dose, you're gonna die by the phosgene eventually. Next up, we have mustard gas, responsible for 80% of the British gas deaths. Holy cow, this stuff does not mess around. A bit more orange than the mixture of the phosgene and chlorine. And now mustard gas is a very sticky substance. What it does is it sticks to all the objects nearby. It can get absorbed through the skin, through the eyes. It attacks the lungs, and of course you can breathe it in. So very deadly, definitely don't want to stay in here for too long. If you do just so happen to get something contaminated, you will have to decontaminate it. So we're going to spawn a washing machine. Who wants their washing machine to be contaminated with mustard? I don't know about you, but not me. We are now facing the debilitating effects of staying within a gas for too long, just like we saw with the Green Cross, and I can't see crap. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this in there. Get that all nice and mustardy, as we like to say. Let's drop it down, and let's see if we get exposed. Oh, 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 but I'm not even near the gas. How is that possible? Well, as you might have already discovered, it is the object that is causing that. So this can get absorbed through the skin. Now, how do we fix that? How do we find a way to remove it? Well, decontamination, of course. We're gonna point out our feet here with the decontamination. Hopefully we can decontaminate ourselves and I'm also gonna try to decontaminate this because I don't wanna keep breathing in mustard or absorbing it in my skin. I wanna wash my damn clothes. Okay, my vision is still a bit askew. However, I do think we clear out the contamination. Let's see, we're just gonna sit here for a minute. If we start dying, we know we didn't do a good enough job. 
Looks pretty good, guys. We're starting to really come to. This object is no longer affecting us because the mustard has been neutralized by our decontamination, also known as a fire extinguisher in this case. Last up, guys, this is going to be the most controversial one, but please stick with me, is cyanide, hydrogen cyanide. Now, this was the gas used in the concentration camps in World War II that killed six million Jews, which was just absolutely horrible. Um, we all know why this happened. I won't say the name. I want to make this as little of a bad video as possible so I don't get demonetized. But this is a odorless gas, lighter than air, very, 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 very deadly in small spaces. As you could tell, it is very hard to detect. Getting close to it, we're going to see the effects. Doesn't actually look all that bad. So let's get into a small enough space and see if that has... This is... Oh, whoa! I'm trembling. This gas will cause death 8 seconds after exposure. I think we're starting to see the effects of that. I'm trembling. Everything's getting all... Like, I'm getting extremely dizzy. I don't know how much longer I'll last. I think since I'm out in the open, I should hopefully be okay. If you get affected with the cyanide, Fear not, for we have an antidote. We have successfully cured the cyanide poisoning. Let's see if that works, and we're back. So, thankfully, we are good to go. Um, I'm not gonna talk any more about this stuff. We also have a M2, A2 gas cylinder. Don't know what the hell's up with my, oh my god, what is wrong with my game? Anyway, this thing is pretty cool. We gotta pick a gas, and we get to pretty much shoot the gas in a very flamethrower type style weapon so let's go ahead and shoot some what is this here's some mustard and we could really lay it on i don't know why it's shooting this way why is it going everywhere that's that's not what i wanted however if the gas does get a little bit out of hand like this fear not for we have a way to protect ourselves by using the chemical suit and the gas mask Putting on the suit, we can go ahead and see we have a suit on and the gas mask, which for some reason doesn't actually show. But in first person, we are good to go. And we're going to actually shoot out this mustard gas right at our feet, really just bake it in. I also just want to really bring back, guys, that this gas uses a very cool particle system where it can really spread in a realistic way. Once again, it is affected by wind. So, I mean, you can pretty much plainly see we're bathing in this gas. We're just walking around, jumping around in it like it's just normal oxygen. And we're not dying because we have this protective gear. Now, remember, you can't just get away with using the mask because some of these gases can absorb through the skin, which it won't absorb as quickly as just breathing it in, but still not really recommended if you're messing with these gases. I would recommend both the suit and the gas mask. Now that thing is pretty cool, and we did take a look at the bursting gas grenade, but now we have a venting gas grenade. So this one is going to be more abrupt. Let's go ahead and throw chlorine out, toss it out, and let's see how it differs from the bursting one. Okay, so we're going to do this, and we're going to also toss the other one to see just how their effects work. That one is extremely quick. Okay. Oh, I can already smell the chlorine. That is... That was probably not a good idea. Okay, okay, okay. So one of them progressively shoots out the gas while the other one just explodes into the gas. So those might be better in certain certain cases. I'm just getting absorbed in all the gases right now. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that, but uh, pretty cool. So I like how they're a little bit different for whatever case you might need them for. All right, we're gonna put on the suit for this one. We're now going to test out the gas containers. First things first, we have chlorine. Now to activate this, guys, go ahead and press the walk key and the use key, and you'll time it, and you listen. There's little ticks, and after a certain amount of time, it'll start releasing a bunch of the gas that you chose. So this is obviously chlorine. We also have green cross, as well as hydrogen cyanide, and mustard, and the phosgene. So, these are all color-coded, and we can go ahead and, I mean, you can see how effective this is. It plumes into the air, and then it comes down very slowly, trying to cover as much surface as possible. Let's go ahead and actually activate all of these. This is going to be very hazardous to my health, but 
I'm going to put on the mask so we're not just going to absolutely die. So remember guys, some of these are colorless. So it's very hard to see them. Like I didn't even think I activated this one, but I did. It is going off right now, but you just can't see it, which makes it extra deadly. And you can seriously cover the entire map in all these gases. That's what makes this mod so damn cool, is the gases can just cover the map. As you can see, these ones are moving in a direction. The ones released from the canisters seem to be more inclined to move in a specific direction. And now we get to my favorite part, the bombs. I want to see how these bombs work, so I'm going to delete all of them except for the chlorine one. Now to activate this, you have to double tap E to arm it, and then you can you can get by with shooting it in the air. I'm going to try the gravity gun. I'm actually going to get up pretty high just to really get a good throw. And I'm going to launch it. It's supposed to explode in the air, but it explodes when it hits the ground. Okay, okay, that works. And once you do, a pretty massive plume of gas will start to spread out. And honestly, I think the spread of this is much bigger initially than a lot of the other ways to get this gas around. So if you really want to cover an area, I recommend the bombs. Now guys, I also want to let you know that these bombs and these gases do work on NPCs. So we're going to actually try this out now by trying out the green cross bomb. Double tap to arm it. Okay, so it says it detonates in mid-air, but I find that it only really detonates once it hits the ground. So let's go ahead and let's give this a try. Alright, so we get a pretty big area covering it. It might take a while for anything to really happen, although I will get closer to see if they're coughing. Indeed they are! They're coughing up a storm! Poor Odessa! They're running away from the dangers. That or they're just following me. Maybe I can lead them into the gas. Oh yes, Odessa, come into the gas. Starting to get the, the blue from the, <laughs> from the takedown mod. And we get our first deaths. Three already. Four. More, more are dying, so they're pretty much just getting submerged in this gas. Honestly, I got suggested this mod because someone said, Hey, Necros, you can kill Dessa in new ways. This just feels morbid. I don't I don't like this. So I thought I would enjoy doing this, but I really don't. I almost, for once in my life, feel bad for Odessa. The show must go on. We have mustard gas. We're going to toss this up in the air. And you know what? We're going to really expedite this. Why not use the phosgene gas too? Now, interestingly enough, we don't have a cyanide gas bomb hmm looks like the creator read my mind or he just had a good idea that maybe we shouldn't make a bomb out of this but that's okay that saves me the trouble from having to not showcase it okay so the bombs work really well like i said they really get a good area within a short amount of time and if you stay within any of these gases for a long time you're pretty much going to die Alright guys, you know me, I don't leave without a bang. These things move on their own for some reason. I'm going to see if I can blow all them up with a rocket. Okay, that's pretty effective. And if you wanted to cover an entire area in gas, there you go, that's how you do it. So I have a bit of a mixture of all the gases. I want to see just how crazy we can make this, just how big of a cloud we can get going. And already the entire starting area is covered absolutely covered in gas that was super super cool okay this is not a place i would want to live however i know that not everything got detonated so we're going to go a step further try not to die we're going to drop a nuke of course this is necros videos what did you all expect if you guys like this video please oh please leave a like down below and subscribe to see more videos just like this one I'll see you guys in the next video. You know what to do. Everything will be down below in the description. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought and what you want to see in the next video. Now we have radiation, nuclear fallout, and of course all the toxic gases you could ever want in a war zone. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Gas was thrown everywhere. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching and until next time, my friends, farewell. As always, the last video I did will be on the left, and a Reddit video on the channel will be on the right. Thanks for watching until the end, and until next time.